everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Tammy Talks here. Let's get into Amazon Prime Videos newest series, Harlem. All right, so if you're brand new to my channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content, thumbs up the video, uh, and then hop down to the comment section, y'all. Let's talk about it. So I'll go, I'll start off with doing like a quick overall, um, like synopsis of what the show is about so you can decide for yourself if you want to watch it. And then after that point, I'll start getting into some stuff basically about the show just so that we don't spoil it for anybody. So the show stars Megan Good as Camille. Grace Byers as Quinn. Let me let me rephrase. Let me redo that. So we have Megan Good as Camille. Camille is Dr. Camille Parks. She is an adjunct professor in anthropology at Columbia University. She's basically the main character of the show. And while she is trying to get the position as an associate professor so that she can be tenure, she reconnects with a boyfriend, with an old boyfriend that it kind of throws her off her game while she is starting to um, put her feelers out to see if she wants to date around. Then we have Grace Byers, who was Quinn. We know Grace Byers from Empire. She played, I think her name was Anika on there. She played um, on Empire. She is the owner of a boutique called Quinn Joseph. Her mother is played by Jasmine Guy. She has a very contentious relationship with her mother where she has... Um, has several different like businesses of her own that kind of keep failing. So she keeps having to go to her parents who are very wealthy for money to kind of stay afloat. So then we have Shaniqua Shandai as Angie. Angie is the, the typical loudmouth friend who is an entertainer. So Angie wants to be a singer. She wants to be an actress. She wants to be a star. She is currently living on... Quinn's couch um she's currently living on Quinn's couch while she figures out what she wants to do and hopefully is able to find a job to better support herself and then we have Jerry Johnson who plays Ty Ty is a queer woman who has created a queer woman and black woman in tech um at that who has created an app for queer people to queer, for queer people of color to better match and meet with one another and their tagline is you are guaranteed to find love so the show also has um richard richard who plays sean whoopi goldberg who plays dr elise pruitt tyler lepley as ian ian is making goods character camille her ex-boyfriend that she runs into um and I feel like that's kind of it for not notable people on the show. So let's get into it. So this show, what I what I really like about it is it doesn't have the typical tropes of black women in their 30s, right? So for the most part, these women are all educated. They are all or all, were all successful in their own right at some point in their career. They're just having minor setbacks at the moment. They're not super, super boy crazy, um, where they are chasing after men every single second. We also don't see them sleeping around with a bunch of men, which happens to be a really, like, which kind of happens to be a theme in some of these shows, where they'll go pick up a random man that they found and go sleep with him right away. So we're not seeing that as, like, a major theme. There's no one character who is the hoe like they always like to do. What I don't like about the show is that it's in New York. And I know, I know, it's called Harlem, but I feel like so many shows about successful women in their 30s, it's like New York is kind of like the go-to. So we had Sex in the City. Um, then we had Run the World, which is on Stars, And I feel like if you compare this to Run the World, this, let me think, this is Run the World's little cousin if that makes sense. So, like, I enjoy that, like, they be dressed on here, like, the coats they wear are good. I feel like there was good character development throughout the entire series. It's our season. It's 10 episodes long. The dialogue was great. I feel like each individual person's storyline was really, really good as well. I absolutely love when they show black women in tech. Um, I love the careers they picked for all of them. Um, an entertainer, um, an adjunct professor, 
an entertainer, an adjunct professor, a black woman in tech, and then a black boutique owner. So they kind of are stereotypical, but I feel like the woman in tech is something that we don't typically often see. So I, I definitely recommend going for the show. Um, there's no trauma in the love story which is what we see so many times where these people have to fight and cuss and they end up kind of getting back together. And it's like, by the end of the show, you're kind of like, do we even want these two characters back together? They seem kind of toxic. So we don't see that. I see healthy progression of um, relationships throughout this. Um, what else? I think it's, without giving away any spoilers, I like, I just, I enjoyed the show. It's a very, very, very easy watch. Each episode is about 35 minutes. I started Friday night. I was done Sunday night. I would have been done on Saturday, but I ended up getting busy. So I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the show. Um, I think it's worth a watch. It's, yeah, definitely worth the watch. I think Megan Good showed, um... Or I would say not show, but reminded us of her acting abilities. Because there are a lot of people that do not feel that she's that good of an actress. I think she did absolutely great. And I love that some of the storylines that end up developing um, throughout the show don't necessarily go the way that you think they were going to. There are some definite comedic points. And then there are some more serious undertone messages and situations that we, um, that we see them navigate through. And I feel like it all works out in the end. So let's get to the nitty nitty with it. All right. So if you have not seen the show yet, stop watching after this point. Come back later. All right, y'all. So this show. So let's just go person by person. Angie's character, the whole get out the musical. That was bad. It was hilarious, but it was bad. I did not like Angie as a character. One, because... I felt like they made her overly loud for no reason. She made a lot of like great points about microaggressions and about racism, how black women um, and black men are always forced to sit back and apologize for something, even when we are offended so that it makes someone else more, makes another white person more comfortable. I loved how she checked the director of Get Out when he was going, like, when he really wanted her to eventually apologize for, you know, that white girl that was being racist. And it ended up working out for her. So, I felt like that was, um, Angie's storyline to me was just kind of played. Uh, the whole, you know, she started as a singer. She was loud and abrasive as a singer. And it kind of made it seem like she ended up ruining her own career. I didn't like how she would always throw it back into Quinn's face that she was... I don't like how they would always, like, she would always throw back into Quinn's face that, you know, well, Quinn doesn't have problems because she comes from money and all this other type of stuff. So I didn't like that. I really wish they would have had Angie actually be in a, a healthy relationship to balance that out. You know what I mean? So if you're going to make her loud and abrasive and whatever like that, that's fine for her character. But I feel like it, it for me, I would have have liked her to meet somebody during when she was looking for a big nigga season, I would have loved for her to like meet somebody and then while she met that person to get in a relationship with that person and not the guy that's on, that's acting with her. You know, if that makes sense. So Ty, love Ty's character. Um, I did, what I didn't like about Ty is how... No, I can't say anything about that. I like Ty's character. I like Ty's storyline. I love the storyline about how she, you know, was uncomfortable with dating a white woman because she was more concerned about how other people would view her. And then it took that it took for her to meet or to walk like cross paths with this black guy who was with a white woman to kind of give her the what up, what up head nod because they kind of had the white, the white spouse or the white partner in common. Um, I just don't like how she handled it. I would have loved to actually see her do more work within tech as opposed to like we know she's working on this app i would have loved to see her go actually get to afrotech or we like actually see her you know doing more than just writing on this whiteboard constantly in regards to that now her storyline where we find out that she is actually married 
um, after she passes out from being sick, which highlights another very, very big, important thing that goes on in the black community of how black women are not truly heard when we go to the doctor. So she was having these deep, like, terrible, terrible pains in her stomach. I thought it was going to be appendicitis at first, but she ended up having like a cyst or something on her ovaries. So when she initially passed out on the train with Quinn and they went to the hospital and that doctor was like, oh, she's just on her period. Take some Advil, take some Tylenol, you'll be fine. And he was kind of like being an ass about it. Like, oh, I have my degree in medicine and I looked at the charts when like they were telling her that does not seem right. And I remember watching that episode with my mom and being like, why would she get a blood transfusion because she passed out for something with her, with her period? Like to me, that just didn't make sense. So then when she does pass out and then we see, um, we find out that she's married. Now, the way that she went about it with her husband was completely ridiculous. Like, he seemed like a good guy. We don't know their story. But once he explained her story of how she jumped up and she moved out of Georgia and she left everybody and she didn't tell her friends or family or anybody where she was going, yeah, that shit is foul. All because she realized she was gay. At, I think she said when she was 18. So I didn't understand, like, why she came at him so hard. Like, he had every right to kind of be like, whoa, you know, I haven't heard from her. I don't know where she is after all this time. You've kept him locked in a marriage, you know, on top of that. So I did like how he like called her out. What I didn't like was that she accused him of wanting to be there for her money. Instead of actually having a conversation with him and being like, okay, what's going on? What can I do to get you to sign this paperwork so that we can terminate our marriage? You know what I mean? Plus, I don't like the fact that Ty seemed very judgmental. Like, whenever the girls were all talking about something, she had this hint of, oh, I would never do no shit like that. Like, she had this hint of judgmental undertones, if that makes sense. That, like, I just, I couldn't get with with her. That definitely, definitely bothered me. Um, Quinn. I will say this. So, I liked Quinn. I liked everything about Quinn's storyline. I liked the fact that she, you know, came for money, but she's trying to find her own way. We find out that she used to be, like, a VP at Chase. She quit because she didn't like her job. So she wanted to follow her passion and find something that she truly wanted to do. And that's how she became um, a designer and how she owns her own boutique. I love that we have got to see this like power struggle with her and her mom not wanting to be um, of her and her mom not wanting to be just like the little, the little princess that her mom wanted her to be, how her mom like. Not the fact that her mom would, like, go in on her, but kind of the fact that, kind of the fact that we never saw her yield to her mom. We never saw her bend to her mom. What I did not like was the phony-ass accent that they had um, Jasmine Guy doing. There was really no point to that. I don't know what that added to... The um, I don't know what that added to the show, but it, it didn't add anything for me. <laughs> that absolutely, like, bothered me. Um, but I liked her storyline with Sean with the stripper. Like, I liked that she was finally yielding to, okay, I don't have to date a man that has all these different boxes checked off. Sean was a good guy. He was a stripper. He did have um, a son, but he's taking care of his son. You can tell that he was a good guy. He was kind of intelligent. All that type of stuff. And I hated the fact that they had her kind of, like, kind of deciding or wanting to figure out if she was, like, gay at the end. I just thought it was just, it didn't make sense to me. It honestly didn't make sense to me. I didn't like the storyline at all. I actually knew from the moment we saw the, the fake AOC girl that that was where the show was going to take a turn to. I actually thought it was going to be her mom trying to introduce her to her, but I didn't really care for that. Um, Camille, making Good's character. So Camille's story is she's supposed to be making associate um, 
professor, but the professor, the department chair that was like writing for her ends up getting suspended for saying a bunch of inappropriate ass shit. <laughs> for saying a bunch of inappropriate stuff um, at a rally, at a protest. So she ends up getting fired and that's where Whoopi Goldberg's character came into play. So Whoopi was like riding Camille the entire time. And what I did not like about that is, while yes, Camille was not ready to be associate professor based on the stuff that Whoopi was um, listing out for her, it to me, it was the fact that Whoopi spent so much time shitting on her instead of like actually trying to help her. So like... Sit down with her, look over her stuff, take the time to talk to her, be a mentor to her, instead of like pitting her against her student. It's, it was almost like Whippy's character wanted to embarrass her to the point where she did like eventually quit. So then when Camille does quit at the end, Whippy's character is like, I'm, I'm, I'm blind, blindsided. No, you're not. Like you shouldn't be shocked at all. You pushed this girl to doing that. And, like, that completely, completely bothered me. Even if she was going to hire a different assistant professor or associate professor, which is, which is perfectly fine because Camille, when they listed out the stuff, yeah, Camille wasn't ready. But the way that Whoopi would constantly ride her and talk about her and try to disrespect her and disregard her was just kind of play. On the flip, Camille was, like, very, very, like, in, in, um, immature and irresponsible with a lot of stuff missing meetings the way that she was spaz out when she was on the panel and there was a couple of different things that she was just very overzealous she was nervous so I feel like Whoopi handled that bad um but I feel like Camille handled it just as bad as well I'm sorry I feel like Camille handled it bad and I feel like Whoopi's character handled it just as bad you know what I mean like when you're in that position, I'm, I'm always a big person, a big believer in reaching back and helping people. So if Whoopi felt she wasn't ready, cool. Help her, you know, parlay her social media following into something. Help her, like, zone in and focus more on what she can do to get herself to be ready. But apparently she's ready enough for Kansas, um, was it Kansas State University, where she was offered an associate professor, you know, um, an associate professor position where she could have made, you know, started the tenure track there. So I didn't, I didn't too much care for that, but Camille and Ian. All right. So this entire, the entire series, we see Camille and Ian having this dance around we know that they used to be together we kept seeing a scene of him getting into a cab and leaving come to find out Ian is Ian was like a chef in training and he was going to Paris so that he could study um studying in culinary school initially Camille was supposed to pack up everything and move with him over there when Camille told her first the first the white um department head about it she kind of told her why are you disrupting your academic um, career? Why are you cutting your studies in half to pack up everything and follow after this man? You know, you're cutting your your dreams, your career path, your ambitions, just to, you know, follow behind him for his dreams. And she was like, you know, I did that. And I regret it because I got started later in life. And now I can't even, real. I'm too old to really enjoy it. So that put something on Camille's mind. Camille, um... Talks about her mother kind of negatively, but never disrespectfully this entire, the entire series. So she talks about how she was a latchkey kid and which we all know latchkey, latchkey children are kids that when they get out of school or they come home, they're typically alone because their parents are out working. That's what that means. So they're kind of fending for themselves um, and taking care of themselves at night until their parents get home. So Camille, um, was like waiting for her mom to show up before they went to Paris. Her mom never met up with her. They get to, they get to the airport. Ian's passport expires in five months. I don't know how long they were supposed to be over there. Um, 
Maybe they weren't supposed to be over there for too, too long, but they were supposed to be over there and he felt that he could just, you know, get over there, come back with it because it would be within the time frame. The stewardess or the lady at the airline tells him that we can't send you out of the country with your passport getting ready to expire. Uh, Camille, who is clearly a type A personality, starts to spiral at this point because things are out of her control. So they go so he can get his passport renewed really quick. He has to expedite it. It's $1,000. So another thing that she is like, why don't you have any money on your credit card? And she's like, in her mind, she's once again having to be the only responsible one when it comes to her friends, her relationship, all of this type of stuff. So she has this moment where she just decides she can't do it. She doesn't want to disrupt her life to go ahead and where she doesn't want to disrupt her life to go ahead and f help him follow his dreams. So they end up breaking up. So when we fast forward to present day, Camille is out protesting um, a new spot that is going to be opening up, gentrification. Um, I probably didn't need the air quotes for that. But there's gentrification that is going on in the area. So one of their old restaurants is now gone. There's going to be a new restaurant that has pictures of white people on the front. They're assuming it's a white restaurant. While she's out protesting, Ian, who she now sees is back in town, tells her that that's his restaurant. So that's how they start to get back entangled with each other. They have a couple awkward like moments where they're running into each other. They're meeting up. You can tell that his mom still really loves him. They meet up at... His mom still really loves her. They go to a... They go to a engagement party that was Titanic themed, and I said, Lord have mercy. So they're at this engagement party, and then that moment when they kissed, and they they felt this instant connection, and Camille starts to think about we should get back together, only for him to tell her that he is engaged. So we see this back and forth thing with them. They keep getting put into these moments where they're getting close. They're having all these moments where they're reminiscing. So finally, at the end, um, coming back together, she professes her love to him the night before his wedding, which I hate when TV shows and movies do that. I hate it. I hate it because it's not realistic. I think it would be more realistic if she would have told him that that night when they met at the engagement party and they had a moment there and then over the course of that they're kind of seeing each other and they're having more of those moments to finally him being like I'm going to break it off because Camille is dating this guy who was very very handsome I don't know who he is but he was fine so she's dating this guy that was apparently an ass but actually really cool in, in person. So it's kind of like, not only are you messing up Ian's fiance's like kind of life, but you're putting him in this other person in the balance. And I just, to me, I don't like love stories like that where you're hurting other people in the process for your own selfish gain, if that makes sense. But that is, that is, um, Harlem season one. I hope it gets to season two, really do, because it was left open-ended. We don't know what's going to happen because Ian's fiance sees Camille and Ian kissing as she's holding her wedding dress. So, like, what is going to happen at the end? If you guys watch the series, um, comment down below. Let me know what you thought about it, what you liked, what you didn't like, and I will catch you guys in the next one.